Now this is row five here. They're usually, they're written like a set because your yarn tails are on this side and then they all move to the other side, right? So chain three and back is a reminder that you are supposed to be behind. There is no recourse for you. If you've done it wrong, you're gonna have to frog your row or cut your yarn or ignore it. If you're like, that mistake is just gonna have to stay, right? So chain three and back is just a reminder to tell you that you're supposed to already be in the back. Then it has one in the front and that starts our star. Our star says two in the front. So they don't know, normally you wouldn't be breaking up one and two, but that's just for your repeats to keep going, right? So we've got two in the front now. You might need a stitch marker if you get confused about which stitches to count. You want to make sure that you actually have three in the front because this is part, this is where the star is. Two in the front, one in the back. Make sure that you're going still into the front of the stitch like you normally would. You're just going behind the purple. And then one in the front. Make sure you bring it to the front before you do your yarn over. And then one in the back. and then four in the front. Now, if you're doing your repeat and you can see that it's actually counts four, and then the star again is two. So when you're looking, maybe you have eight repeats and you're trying to count your stitches. Remember that it's actually six in the front in a chunk and that the star kind of breaks those repeats up, right? That's the part I think it, people get confused at those stars because it's breaking up your instructions but we are only going to do four because that's the end of my repeat. And then an end back. So our final stitch is going to go through the back. Grab that chaining, bring it to the back so that we can finish our double crochet. So this is the wrong side, but that is the beginning here. And then we are going to be at row six. We're going to grab our purple. And then we're looking at the right side. That's what the RS means, right side. And these accent color, the working part and the tail has to stay in the front. This is, this is when it matters. And then we're going to do chain three and one stitch in the front. So make sure you're counting. This counts as your chain three bar first stitch is here. You'll notice as we go along that the edges have the same image. It's dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Then it says four in the back. So we're going to go in the back window, pull it to the back, then do our yarn over. We're going to do one. We're going to do two. We're gonna do three. We're gonna do four. And it has two in the front. So we're making sure that our yarn doesn't go around the teal, right? These are interlocking stitches. They are not actually connected to each other. And then three in the back. So I kind of Pull it there to the back. One. Make sure you chain between them. Two. If you're confused at the way my patterns are written, it might be helpful to look at the key and read through that. Or look at my other video that says intro to reading my patterns, okay? We're going to have another front stitch. And don't forget to do your end stitch chaining then you just kind of go into that final box that's that now it's much quicker when you're only doing one repeat but hopefully you'll be just making a big beautiful blanket or something or maybe even a shawl I don't know now it tells you again chain three in front at this point it's too late if you are finding that you're behind that means that when you started your purple row it was on the wrong spot Okay, so that's just a reminder. Then we're going to have three in the back. 
one chain, two chain, three, and then it says front back, front back, front back. That's a, that's what it's saying, okay? stuck here sorry so those brackets can get confusing for people as well but that's why the video is here to help and maybe we'll have every crocheter learning how to do interlocking and that will be super duper awesome then we're going to end here after our star so you if you got the end of your star you're gonna to have to go back to three back right but we are at the end of our star, which says do another one in the back and do your end stitch. Oh, don't miss that. There we go. End stitch in front. So we're going to go through that loop. And you should probably use stitch markers to keep this from unraveling while you're busy working on the other row. I like to live dangerously. Actually, I'm just, I get annoyed at the tick, tick, ticking when it's on my desk. <laughs> so it again is telling you WS that's the wrong side and the accent color has to stay on the back keep it away from you and we are going to start with the chain three this is our outside stitch because it's our main color so it doesn't have a front or back it's just on the outside so it just says chain three then we're going to do one in the back keep those tails out the way Then our star, it says to do two in the front. And this is where you would start again. Then one in the back. And then two in the front again. That's what those brackets mean. And one in the back. And then it says three in the front okay so if you are finished your row that's the end of the star but if you need to start at the star again the star continues with two in the front so you'll actually have a section here that looks like five in the front which is why stitch markers can help you for counting to know how many repeats you've done and we're going to put one in the back because we're done our star section the star repeating section you know and then our end stitch just goes in that final loop section. Da, da, da. We got a little bit tangled here. I'm just going to flip around. So this one, again, it's just telling you that you're already in the back. It's just a reminder note. There's nothing you can do about it now except for frog or cut it or leave it. It's your options. One, two, three. You can do four if you find that you chain tighter than me and it's getting too tight. Uh, I do three. That's really two for the, like essentially it's a double crochet plus the chain space. So if you usually do three for a double crochet, do four total here. Then it says one in the front. Make sure you keep it on the front. Everything goes together here. And then back front, back front, back front. That's what it's saying in the brackets, okay? I like these funky colors. I'm curious to see what colors you guys are going to pick for summertime. Oops, make sure you don't get the purple in there. I sometimes get a little bit too squashed. I just got some of the fibers. All right, so that's how the brackets work here. We've got one bracket, two brackets, three brackets. Then it says back with two front. So it's not the same as the brackets. That's why it doesn't belong in there. And if you're repeating, now you're gonna go back to that star 
I am at the end. So I'm just going to find my little loop. I'm going to go behind the purple, and grab that corner, keep everything behind the purple. There you go. Now row 10, accent color has to come to the front. Chain three, one in the front. So you can see we are getting this line, line, line. And then it says, our star repeat starts with two in the back. Now this section has a lot of lines in it, which makes the fabric quite tight. Some of the interlocking stitches will be a little bit more loose because giant sections that don't lock into each other kind of feel more wavy. But this one has a lot of lines in it, so it will feel a little bit tighter than maybe some of the other designs that I have. Just an FYI. So we did our two in the back. Don't forget your chain spaces. One in the front. Four in the back. I'm gonna grab it, pull it to the back. I hope you're getting the hang of how these stitches work. If not, you just need more practice. Keep going. And a front end, a back one, so one front space, one back. Then that's the end of the star. You'll start at the beginning again if you're doing your repeats. And we're going to end with a front one and an end stitch into that final square. So chain three in the front, of course, it's just reminding you that you should be in the front already. And the star is with two in the front. Make sure you find the right stitch. Oops. We're always going into the actual stitch, not those chain spaces, right? And a back stitch, and a front stitch, and three in the back. front and a back again. Don't forget to start at the star if you're done your repeat. And we're going to end, once we get to the end of our piece, with one in the front and an end, end front is what I call it because it's the end stitch but it goes in the front still. On row 12, I'm going to put one in the back, and then our star kind of interrupted that instructions, right? So one in the back, but then the star says another back. So make sure you actually have two. And then we're going to do six in the front. Six, one. That's how I count them. Maybe that's from my other videos. I mentioned it. When I'm doing big chunks like that, I say six, 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 six in front of every stitch and I remind myself how many I want because my brain can't hold that much information. So I go six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, and six, six. That's, then I know that the numbers match. That's the end of that section. When I look at my pattern, I know I was looking for six. I tried counting down like six, five, four, three, two, one, but then I forget how many I've done. 
so I get lost in the pattern. So that's how I do it. Then we do one back stitch and one front stitch. And that's the end of our star. You can go back and repeat. We are going to end it with one in the back and our final stitch on the end here. And just a random other note for whoever might be watching. I do have a copyright notice on my blog that talks about how I don't want you to sell my patterns as your own. And that includes making videos, even if you were to say, hey, look, Ashley Brothel came out with this pattern and I'm going to show you how to make it. Because that's part of my copyright protection. You can't make your own video uh, unless I give you permission, which I haven't given anyone permission yet. And there is a note there that says you can use some of my terminology though, because I think it's getting very confusing with interlocking crochet specifically. Everyone gets very scared about copywriting someone. So I call these end stitches and then I call the next one either an end in the front or an end in the back. You can use that terminology if you create patterns of your own. That to me just seems like something we can just be cohesive about. We can work together as a group. Uh, I know it doesn't really fit in this video, but I felt like I should mention it just in case someone's watching. Okay, you can go look at my blog and it'll be all good. Now we are on, oh, that's something else. That's what I want to show you. How do you know? You put your work down, you come back and you go, oh, where was I? Okay, so we're going to look at the dark color. That's my main color. And it doesn't matter if you're looking at the right side or the wrong side. We're going to count these window. You can kind of pull them. So this is actually row zero. So that means that the dark purple line on top, I guess it is easier from the front just because this, when you're counting, this is row zero, then this is row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which means the purple rows are always gonna be even. So this is zero and this is two. So I just count the gaps. I go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. That means that this row purple at the top, that was row 12. And right now I want to be working on the next row, which happens to be row 13. Okay. So we got chain three in the back. It also helps if you're unsure, you can have the clue of, well, every other section is either right side or wrong side. And I'm looking at the wrong side right now because those lines are straight on the front and on the wrong side, they do all these little dashes only works on my patterns some other designers do things differently but that does help you know it's either if I'm looking at the wrong side it's either got to be row 13 or row 15 says right side accent front right so that section it can't be that so if your count is off those are some clues to help you we are going to keep going we have chain three in the back then it says one in the front the next sections of this crochet along should go quicker because I won't have as many things that I feel like I need to tell the newbies. If you're new to the technique, if you're new to me, this is the introduction section. So there's a lot of things to go over. Now I missed saying it out loud, but I had started with a the front, then the star. It tells me my repeat starts right here. Then I did one in the back and now we are doing five in the front. So five, one, five, two, Five, three, five, four, and five, five. I like how the interlocking designs create a picture on both sides. They're not always opposite pictures, but they are opposite stitches. Okay. So we have one in the back and two in the front. Sometimes it can be hard to find the right stitch. And the final is ending in the back. There we go. So I hope by now we've gotten this far. You've got an understanding of the way the technique works. We have quite a nice little section coming. It's pretty exciting. We are now on row 14. It says we're looking at the right side. And this accent color has to come to the front. Um, I like to keep my, I don't know if you've noticed, the working loop and then this yarn tail, I keep it kind of on the front. That keeps things 
looking the same and not so twisty. So we have chain three and one stitch in the front. Make sure those loops are out the way. And then nine in the back. Now, if you are confident in your skills, you don't even really have to count. You're just gonna go in the back all the way across your project. So you've got nine repeats or seven repeats or whatever. You don't really have to count them. You're just gonna go all the way across until you get to the end, okay? You can count them if you want to. I do, actually. <laughs> I give this advice, but I, I like to count. I feel like the counting is part of why I like crochet. It keeps me focused on the moment and if I count every single row and every single stitch, then I know I haven't made a mistake that later I'll have to pull it apart and I will be so sad to waste all that time, right? So if you've got your stitch markers, keeping your repeats apart, or if you just like counting, or if you wanna just go to the end, this is a row of all in the back until you get to the end. Oh, my little double crochet went weird there. Let me try again. So you're going to go all the way in the back, in the back, in the back, until you get to these, I call them my border design, it's just a line and a line and a line. Very exciting. But we want to keep that, the star ends and it says to put one in the front, don't forget your chain space, and do your end stitch in that final box. And then our tails are on different sides, but that is the end of what I call chevron A, it really just goes up and down, and then your repeat starts here, up, right? So, ta-da, there it be. You might, I panicked at one point, I saw this little square and I thought, oh, I made a mistake. But that is only a square here, once you keep going, it, it looks proper, okay? So your repeats probably look better than mine, mine is very small. We are going to Hopefully have the next release come out in a few days uh, That's it for now